If you're ever wondering if one of your ideas is crazy, try writing it as a ratio of whole numbers. If you can't, it's probably irrational. Okay, so I may have said some things last week that alienated several viewers, and I'd just like to issue a formal apology. I'm very sorry. If you're a Kirk fan, you have every right to be a Kirk fan. However, even if you're a hardcore TOS fan, if you're anything like me, you've wondered why a guy like Spock is taking orders from anybody, especially someone like Kirk. Spock is basically a superhero. He's got three times normal human strength. He can take out just about anybody in a straight fight with that neck pinch. He can read people's minds, and apparently he knows practically everything. And in the face of impending peril, when Kirk gets them into some grim situation, he's always as cool as a cucumber. In the Star Trek universe, Vulcans like Spock are all about logic, to the point that they have ceremonies to purge themselves of all emotion. This is a pretty common idea outside of Star Trek too, that reason and emotion are antithetical, that your brain pulls you in one direction and your heart pulls you in another. There are decent examples of this principle in practice. The appeal to emotion fallacy is a relatively common problem, where instead of trying to convince you using rational arguments, someone will try to make you feel an emotion, whether it's fear, pride, or righteousness, and then hitch their idea to the momentum of that emotion. For example, many animal rights campaigns don't depend solely on logical arguments, like how a mostly vegetarian diet is healthier or more environmentally friendly or cheaper than a diet with lots of meat in it. Instead, they appeal to emotions of sympathy and disgust, saying, look at this cow, it is sad, don't you feel bad about this sad cow? Stop eating meat. That doesn't mean that animal rights campaigns don't have a point. It just means that they're not appealing to logic to make you a vegetarian. They're appealing to how sad cows make you feel. Emotion can also directly bias us against logic. We're much more likely to believe ideas that make us feel good, regardless of how little evidence exists for them, or sometimes how much evidence exists against them. If you've ever known someone in an abusive relationship, you've probably seen how just a little bit of emotion can make them totally oblivious to the reality of their situation. People will actually say things like, they only hit me because they love me so much, because it feels so good to believe that they're loved, and it would feel so bad to acknowledge that they're a victim and living a lie. Both the appeal to emotion fallacy and emotional bias suggests that if someone's trying to stir up your emotions to convince you of something, whether they're a politician, a spouse, or an advertiser, it might be because they can't depend upon a totally rational person to agree with them. You should probably try to be extra critical if you feel your blood boiling or your heart fluttering. So emotion bad, logic good, like you'd expect anything else from a show called Thunk. But actually, that's not true. There's a twist to this. Emotions are actually beneficial for rational decision making. In 2007, Myungu Siu and Lisa Feldman Barrett published the results of an experiment designed to measure how emotions affected the capacity for logical analysis. They gave test subjects a fake stock portfolio and asked them to make daily decisions over the course of a few weeks about what stocks to buy or sell, as well as filling out a daily evaluation of what they were feeling while they were trading and how intensely. The results were very interesting. Whenever somebody reported very intense emotions while they were trading, they performed significantly better than they did normally. By itself, this wouldn't be especially convincing, but similar results have been reported in all sorts of different studies. Being emotional, especially angry, allows people to analyze things quicker and more accurately, from poker hands to persuasive essays. So what the hell is going on here? Well, the C.O. Barrett study actually suggests an answer, and I think that it makes a lot of sense. We like to think of emotion as being diametrically opposed to logic, that more of one means less of the other, but it's more likely that they both exist in our heads all the time. Even when we're harnessing our so-called cold, calculating, logical brain to crunch a math problem or solve a puzzle, our emotions don't go away, we just pay less attention to them. You might feel pressure to prove your intelligence, or feel rushed, or feel a little bit hungry. All those things are still happening, but because you're focusing on the problem, you might not recognize when those feelings are influencing your judgment or dragging your attention away from it. The test subjects who were trading under the influence of intense sadness or anger weren't just swept away by torrents of unchecked emotion. They were encouraged to reflect on and consider how they were feeling. In places where emotional bias might make somebody who wasn't paying really close attention leap to an irrational conclusion, being consciously emotional fills that space and eliminates some of the noise that makes thinking harder, as well as giving us a little bit of a clue as to potential bias that might come from that part of the brain. Okay, I'm angry right now. Angry people sometimes judge things too severely. I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to go back and check to make sure that me being angry isn't making me too judgmental or affecting my reasoning in any way.
That might be the answer to the paradox. Feeling emotions doesn't impair thinking, it's actually helpful for focus. The only problems arise when we lack awareness about what we're feeling and why, and fail to use that mental check to override whatever bias that might cause. Maybe Vulcans work better without any emotions at all, but the science shows that humans think better when they're mindfully emotional, and to ignore the science would be illogical. Have you ever gotten laser focus from being angry? Have you ever been emotionally biased about something and realized it after the fact? Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to blah blah subscribe blah share, and I'll see you next week.